Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and welcome to the Kicker Bike Shift, one of two new products introduced today by Wahoo. It's cheaper, it's quieter, and the power numbers of the bike I've been testing are spot on. So coming up in today's video, all the details and my ride experience of what I'm labeling the new Kicker Bike Junior. Now, just like the newly introduced Wahoo Kicker Move Direct Drive Smart Trainer, the Wahoo Kicker Bike Shift is an addition to the current product lineup from Wahoo. It doesn't replace the Kicker Bike. Now, before getting to the on-bike ride details, let's cover off the tech specs and what's different between the Kicker Bike Shift and the Kicker Bike. Full tech specs here, everything we expect, Amp Plus, Amp Plus FEC, Bluetooth, FTMS, multiple Bluetooth in this case, Wi-Fi, wired Ethernet, all your connectivity options are covered, speed, power, cadence, and train and control, power accuracy, plus or minus 1%, no calibration required with this one, power up to 2200 watts, great simulation, 20%, or if you like the downhills, negative 15. This unit is virtually silent. It's not completely silent, but it is pretty quiet. We'll do some sound tests later on. Group set functionality or simulation, Shimano DI2, SRAN, Campagnolo, fully customizable with what you want up the front there or on the back, virtually. Auxiliary buttons on the handlebars allow you to do steering, U-turns, and other functions in-game with your software supports it. Crank length, 165 through 175 with the five-pole bear claw, I'll call it. Adjustability and fit has the quick adjustments. There's also the full setup guide within the Wahoo app. It's all pretty straightforward. This bike is made for multiple riders. Customization-wise, you can replace the saddle, the bars, the stem, the pedals, put some TT or tri bars on this thing if you want. You can make it your own bike. The brakes themselves also work, they do stop that flywheel, and if the software supports that functionality, your avatar will also slow down. This has an odometer, so you can check the usage of the bike over time. Erg Easy Ramp, firmware updates are either automatic or via the Wahoo Fitness app. Pricing wise, comes in a little under. The Wahoo Kicker Bike US, $3,000. Canadian, looking at around $4,200. Pounds, looking around $2,700. Euros, around $3,000. And Aussie dollars, looking around $4,500. Now, what are the key differences between the Kicker Bike and the Kicker Bike Shift? Here is my list right here. Now, the Shift doesn't have any real-time tilting or gradient simulation. The frame on the Kicker Bike Shift has been redesigned with a smaller or thinner top tube, so less chance of thigh rub. The resistance unit is electromagnetic, not motor-driven like on the Kicker Bike. There's no gearing display anywhere on the Kicker Bike Shift itself. There's no wheels on the rear of the bike to move it around, and there's no flat pedals in the box. Now, after spending many, many hours on the Kicker bike shift, I think I'm qualified to address a few of those concerns of what's missing from the kicker bike shift, starting off with the tilting, and to be honest, it's not for everyone. If you've never had it, you don't miss it. And the kicker bike shift is not a brick fence with handlebars. It does have a little bit of movement to it, so it's not totally static. The electromagnetic resistance unit does feel a little stiff through the drivetrain if you just step on the bike and try to start pedaling. The kicker bike does have a little bit of push to the motor as you start off to address that. This is a different resistance unit, but once you're in sim mode or erg mode in your software of choice, it's fine just riding along. The kicker bike shift, having no gear display on the bike itself may be a concern for some, but a lot of software we're connecting to these days will have that gearing information on screen. RGT, full gas, not Zwift, not just yet. However, with the relationship between Zwift and Wahoo now being friendly again, hopefully we'll see that soon. In the meantime, any updated Element bike computer will support the Shift gear display, and it is an excellent addition to the front of the bike. Now, in the absence of those little moving wheels on the back of the bike that the Kicker Bike has, the Kicker Bike Shift is a lot lighter, so moving the thing around isn't too much of a hassle. Addressing the no pedals issue, I think to be honest, the flat pedals supplied with the Kicker Bike are probably the least used pedals in the world. I think if you're buying a bike at this level, you probably have your own pedals and cleats that will go onto this bike. They're only 15 bucks anyway. So overall, I've been impressed with the Kicker Bike Shift over my test riding in the last few weeks. But before even stepping foot on the bike, I made some modifications and personalizations. Let's have a look at those now. When it comes to the unboxing and the initial setup, Wahoo have this covered with an updated out-of-box experience where you can scan a QR code and they'll run you through exactly what to do. They do say to bring a friend, but in the absence of having any of those, here's me doing my best to build the bike all by myself. All the required tools are supplied in the box to get the job done. The whole process from unboxing to getting my initial measurements on the bike took around 20 minutes. Now it is worth noting that the seat post is a D-shaped seat post in a round shape hole still. So you do need to do some visual alignment of the saddle. Here's me getting all my basic measurements set up. And the Fivero Asiomas installed for my initial testing. 
before making a few modifications to the touch points before taking the bike into the Llama Lab. The first thing I swapped out was the saddle, installing an Ergon all-road saddle with a channel down the center, which I find a lot more comfortable for riding indoors. The second touch point, which is very important, the bar tape. Over there on the left, I've double taped. And just as a comparison there, over on the right, I haven't double taped that one just yet. So you can see the difference between the two, much more comfortable for me over there on the left. And I've also angled the levers in just a little bit to just make it a little bit more ergonomic in the hand when spending hours and hours hanging onto those levers. And the final modification that I made to the kicker bike shift was to the new front data connector that when unplugged, shuts the entire bike off. Now those magnets are relatively strong, but if you just happen to brush that cable with a towel over the handlebars, the bike can shut off. Ask me how I know. So it was out with a rubber band as a temporary solution, which gives it a little bit more strength and shouldn't see this get knocked off. This is something that Wahoo are aware of and may address in the future. All right, with those done, it's time to get on the bike and have a chat about the ride experience. First things first, a sound check of the kicker bike shift in the Llama Lab with the microphones that I'm using. And I can confirm it's not silent, but there's no resonance in any different RPMs like there is with the kicker bike. And you can definitely hold a conversation while riding along at any RPM. Okay, jumping ahead a few minutes after I turn some fans on. And just showing you the bike wiggle on the front end there. It's definitely not stiff. There is a little bit of movement, depending on the floor you're using, obviously. But it's definitely nothing like riding a brick fence with a set of handlebars on it. Okay, skipping ahead to having everything paired via Dircon, I also have to pair the controllable to the bike, which allows access to the steering via the inner buttons and the auxiliary buttons on top of the hoods as well. Hot tip for those using Zwift and a kicker bike. Ticking along in erg mode here for my steady state testing. Pedal stroke and flywheel nice and smooth on this bike. You can see there's just a little bit of movement with the rear saddle there and the seat post. Jumping ahead into the 250 zone and just about to start the sprint. So you'll see how stable this bike is with an all-out effort. And it held up just fine. No problems at all there. With the stability of the kicker bike shift with an all-out sprint. A little further into the workout, into the overs and unders and the erg response. Nice smooth ramp up within a second and a half, I think. Taking me up to the 450 zone and bringing me back down after 20 seconds of pushing relatively hard on the pedals. Now, although I'm in erg mode here, something related to sim mode that is missing on this bike at this point in time is race mode. So that 10 hertz update where the power pours on as soon as you press the pedals isn't a feature of this bike just yet. Fingers crossed it will be coming soon, if at all possible. Oh, and another quick tip on the gear display on the Wahoo Element head units that does need to be paired over Bluetooth to those head units to get that gearing display. Okay, with that workout done, it's time to show you a cool little trick with the gear display on the Wahoo Element unit. Okay, angle switch for this one and pulling up the Wahoo app, connecting to the sensor there with all the shifting options. I have DI2 selected, we scroll down. And if I make that a 3 by 13 you might not have seen it, but the gearing on the element changes straight away. Same with making it a 1 by 9 or a 3 by 9 Those changes show up on the element in real time. Super cool stuff. I do like this feature of showing the gearing on their head units. On to a quick spin through the data sets recorded with the Wahoo Kicker Bike Shift here on my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool. Kicking off here with the Kicker Bike Shift and the Asioma Duo's Llama Lab Test. And from the get-go, we have this little section through here, 207, 207. So things were looking very, very good early on with the bike. Into my steady state, 
224, 224, things are lining up very well. Uh, short sprint and the shift kicking in a little quicker there. Again, this is uh, one hertz recording once per second, so there's gonna be a little bit of shadowing there, but not too far off, the maximum sprints. Into the overs and unders, the 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. All looking good on the pedals. It was a good experience that Erg kicked in nice and smooth, kicked out nice and smooth. There was a drop in data here from the kicker bike. That's unexplained for now. Uh, that was sent over to Wahoo. We haven't seen it again in the hours and hours of data that I've got, but that was a bit of a weird one. The drop down here, which is probably just above my head somewhere, that is explainable. Oh, there's always a dip after Erg backs off. You'll see it here, here, depending on how much pressure you are putting on the pedals and how smooth you are. So that's nothing to worry about through here. Onto the small ramp test, flywheel speed test, virtual flywheel speed test, and some just riding along. Let's grab that whole slab and have a look at. So the response time, nice and fast there on the up for that short little ramp test and kick. The bike just a little bit lower, the pedals are a little bit more responsive, but that really wasn't a sustained effort. The flywheel speed test or the virtual flywheel speed test of this one. Typically this is reserved for direct drive trainers where you can skip through the real gearing and influence the flywheel speed. On virtual bikes there's one gear and flywheel speed is dependent on your cadence. This was all done at about the same cadence but different virtual gearing and it did have an impact with the Wahoo Kicker Bike Shift. So in the easiest of easy gears, the virtual hill climbing gear, the erg set point was a little bit wavy. Then when I changed down a few gears, things stabilized. And then when I went to the biggest gear that it had, it was still a little wavy. Indicating the virtual gear you choose with the kicker bike shift does have an impact on that erg experience. I'll discuss this later on in my conclusions, but that was interesting to see. With the firmware that I had, you've got to be in the right gear for erg. And lastly, just riding along to close off that session, 153, 152 within a watt, that's within spec. Data set number two, the Wahoo Kicker Bike Shift up against the Rally RS200s. And we have a warm up through here, 227, 228 on the Garmin Rallies. Looking good. Into my 200, 250, into a short sprint. Let's look at the Erg here. Looking beautiful there, 225, 226. Short sprint on the Rallies. Uh, not looking too bad. Kicker Bike Shift just slightly higher with that peak there. Nothing too far off. Overs and unders. 250, 251, data looking good there. That drop that I had in the other data set doesn't exist here, that's all good. Small rampy, looking beautiful. Uh, another small ramp and just riding along home. 197, 198. Things are looking really, really good with the kicker bike shift and the Rally RS200s. Jumping down to cadence and similar to what I see on the Wahoo kicker move with my pedal stroke, it under reports just a little bit in erg mode, but in sim mode, just fine. Jumping here to the short little erg mode session that I did, so 100 RPM on the kicker bike shift, 101.9 on the rallies, just a little bit under. And then in sim mode, just riding along, uh, 84, 85, very, very close. On to data set number three and Mrs. Lama's workout, where I just told her to jump on the bike and ride. Easy for her to set up the bike with the adjustments and I did all the dual recording, so she didn't have to worry about any of this. I think this is Emily's mix that she'd done here in erg mode. She's a little bit, uh, Less smooth on the pedals, I would call it. Good test for the bike there. 167 kicker bike shift, 167 rally RS 200s. I was pretty happy to see that. Further on in the ride, she went to sim mode, just riding along, a few little uh, accelerations and things. Uh, 116 versus 115, very, very close there between those two. So overall, the data coming from the Wahoo kicker bike shift I've had in the Llama Lab is excellent and something that I can use to compare other power meters to. It's gonna be a solid benchmarking unit. Okay, so after riding the kicker bike shift in the Llama Lab for the last few weeks, my overall take is I like it. And I do like the modifications they have made to the frame, especially that smaller top tube where I have no thigh rub issues, something I do have with other bikes. The up and down tilt wasn't missed. Well, if you have it and it's taken away, you do miss it for a little while, but the bike does have a little bit of flex in it. So it's not as if you were riding, as I said before, a brick fence with a set of handlebars on it. The ride feel, gear changes, erg mode were all excellent as we've come to expect from Wahoo, but there was that weird one with having to be in the right virtual gear for erg mode. I've discussed this with Wahoo. They may look at setting the bike in a correct or optimal gear if you do switch to erg mode, which will stop that over and under wonkiness if you're in a really easy virtual gear. Something that can be sorted in software. This coming in $1,000 US less than the kicker bike, 
is also a big tick from me, but I still am disappointed at the quality of the components supplied for the touch points. Those being the handlebars, the handlebar tape, and the saddle. They do feel a little cheap, and if you're spending hours and hours and hours indoors, there's something you probably want to swap out, as I did, before getting into the Llama Lab testing here. And the final thing I'll touch on today is the Wi-Fi connectivity and the Dircon protocol from Wahoo being excellent. It means any software that you choose that supports Dircon will support this bike, and it's as close to set and forget as we'll ever get with these devices, for the meantime anyway. Now I do miss race mode on this bike, I really wish it would have that 10 hertz mode, maybe something they can add in the future, along with a heart rate bridge, allowing us to pair our heart rates to the bike itself, and then when connected to our software of choice, there's only one simplified connection to everything. That would be brilliant. Maybe sometime in the future we'll see that. Alrighty, with that, we'll leave it there today. That's my take on the Kicker Bike Shift, the new Kicker Bike Junior, added to the Wahoo lineup today. If you've enjoyed this one and found it informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, and I'll see you soon. Got a delivery. What is it? What do you got, mate? Please be something small. All right. How you doing? Morning. Good, good. One for Shane. No. Just a name. Shane. Done. Awesome. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thank you. One for Shane. No. Got Shane written on the box. Can I have a name, mate? Yeah, Shane. Thanks, mate. We'll get to that in the next review.